Hey there, Pastor Ben here, continuing our study through the book of Galatians. This week, the passage we'll be reading is Galatians 4, verses 12 through 20. We saw in our last passage that Paul was warning the Galatians against uh, the, the dangers of legalism and allowing that to be the most important thing, the end-all be-all of our relationship with God. Uh, not a new message and not a, a new uh, fault for the Galatians and neither for us today that uh, our human efforts can never come anywhere close to uh, the perfect sacri sacrifice that we needed that came from Jesus. As we look at today's passage, uh, we'll see a side of Paul that maybe we haven't considered um, given his use of strong language. Um, he uses strong language here, but in a very different way. And so let's jump in here at verse 12. He says, <clears throat> Brothers, I entreat you, become as I am, for I also have become as you are. You did me no wrong. You know it was because of a bodily ailment that I preached the gospel to you at first. And though my condition was a trial to you, you did not scorn or despise me, but received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. What then has become of the blessing you felt? For I testify to you that if possible, you would have gouged out your eyes and given them to me. Have I then become your enemy by telling you the truth? They make much of you, but it is for no good purpose. They want to shut you out, that you may make much of them. It is always good to be made much of for a good purpose, and not only when I am present with you, my little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. I wish I could be present with you now and change my tone, for I am perplexed about you. So we see this greeting that we've seen a couple of times. He begins calling them brothers. Um, and then he gives them an instruction. I entreat you, become as I am. Now, Paul is not saying I'm perfect. He's not saying uh, I've got it all together. But he is saying he is secure in uh, the beliefs that he has and the way that he is not just saying truth, but living it out um, and, and trying to show them maturity in Christ. Maturity looks like this. And then he says an interesting statement uh, attached to that, for I have also become as you are. A better translation of the verb would be because I became like you are. Uh, he's pointing back to his own personal struggle with being zealous and, and legalistic and how that led him uh, as we know through his story, to persecute and kill the church, the early church. Um, and so he's saying, I understand the, the appeal of <clears throat> being zealous for God, of, of wanting the, the law to be fulfilled, wanting to uh, live out this life in the way that, that God set out in, in uh, his law. But that only works so far as we've seen the argument over and over and over uh, throughout this letter that uh, the law was never meant to take us all the way to uh, our salvation, right? It points us to Jesus. It points us to how desperately we need God. And then we find a little bit of the backstory of Paul with the Galatians in, in the origin of their church. It says, you did me no wrong. You know, it was because of a bodily ailment that I preached the gospel to you at first. And though that bodily ailment was a trial to the church. He says that they did not scorn or despise him, but received him as an angel of God and as Christ Jesus. Now, we don't know exactly what ailment he's talking about. Uh, a little later on, as he says that you may have gouged out your eyes in order to help me, some think maybe it had something to do with his sight, uh, which would track physically from what we know his uh, conversion experience was in seeing Jesus. But um, some other scholars say that it might be the thorn in his side, right? We're not, we're not sure. But what we know and what's important here is the response of the Galatian church, that they accepted him as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus himself. Again, pointing back to that same passage in Matthew, uh, I think in Matthew 7, where um, Jesus said, you know, you clothed me, you fed me, you took care of me. And, and the response is, well, when did we do that? And he says, what you've done to the least of those you've done to me. And Paul very frequently says, I am the least, right? of the apostles. I'm the, the lowest of the low. Uh, so I don't think that his pointing back to these words is accidental. And then he asked them, so you felt so, so good about me. 
right? You, you helped me out in my time of need. Uh, what then has become of the blessing that you felt, right? Why, why is now suddenly there's animosity towards me? Um, and then he points out really where that animosity is coming from in verse uh, 16, 17, 18. He says, have I then become your enemy by telling you the truth? They make much of you. They being the Judaizers, the, the people who are uh, trying to separate Jewish believers from Gentile believers, the ones that are trying to get these Gentile believers to uh, acquiesce to every law and thought and, and Jewish ideal way of living that was somehow going to save them or make them more right with God and bring the, the relationship to its, its true nature instead of it just being this, this simple uh, way of relating to God of, of salvation through Jesus Christ. Right. And he says, they make much of you, but for no good purpose. So he's saying there's, there's, they are not doing well in leading you astray. And then he goes on further. Uh, they want to shut you out. They want to exclude you, uh, which is an interesting statement. But again, I think points back to, uh, we see uh, earlier in the letter that Paul calls out Peter for not wanting to sit with uh, the Gentile believers for fear of these people. Right, so they're trying to. The, this group is trying to separate um, this this idea of the the true Jewish religion, uh, the, the the true Jewish Christian is this way, and by excluding them from the true the actual true believers, the the Church Universal that includes all who are in Christ, um, whether they're Jewish of origin or not. Um, that that status right is then potentially causing people to make much of the Judaizers. Hey, they're pointing out this is a good thing, and so it's 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 an easy temptation to go. Well, if this is a good thing, then I should be a part of it. If this is what God intended, if 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 the the promise that God gave to Abraham uh, leads us into the law and fulfilling the law leads us into God, then yes, we should do this, and it's good that we have the law as Jews and we get to do this. And Paul's pointing out, no, this is not, this is not okay. This is not good. Um, and and he says it by saying uh, the opposite. It's good to be made much of for a good purpose. So earlier he says that this is for no good purpose in verse seventeen, but um, it's okay to understand that salvation is a good purpose, right? Um, and and Paul is trying to teach that lesson to. The Galatian church, um, because he says, not only when I am present with you, my little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. A couple of really interesting good things here. Um, my dear little children, and, and being this idea of being in the, the pains of childbirth, we see this um, fatherly Paul writing. He's so impassioned. He's so concerned and it's not the concern of you need to be right because I'm right and you're wrong it's it's a truly a concern of out of out of love out of his, his heart for these people he wants them to know the truth he wants them to know uh, who they are in Christ and what that really truly means um, and so he he makes this analogy as as though he as as the mother of the Galatian church that birthed out of his efforts um, in Christ that that he wants to see these children of his again metaphorically become more like Christ right and then he he ends this with the section with i wish i could be present with you now and change my tone so he, he's realized he's had strong tone right you foolish Galatians, um you know who's bewitched you why don't you emasculate yourselves he he's used this strong language and he he knows it and and he's Sad that he has to use that kind of strong language via letter because he can't be with them in order to talk to them to really understand. He's he's responding to what he's hearing happening in the best way that he can in the time given, right? That he's writing a letter since he can't physically be there. Um, and so he's having to express himself strongly in order to have them understand what's happening. And it's it's important that they get it right. That's That's where his heart is. He doesn't want them to 
to miss out on on the blessings of of identity in Jesus. He he wants more than anything, as he says, that uh, Christ is formed in them, um, and and that that motivation uh, should be ours as well. That um, as we disciple one another, as we uh, go through life on our own, um, but also together, that uh, our prayer for ourselves is that Christ be formed more in me, and that in my interactions with the church, that Christ is more formed in you because of uh, how we are uh, interacting together. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's good to be concerned in that way, because then that uh, doesn't leave room for selfish ambition. It doesn't leave room for um, my comfort is more important than someone else's. It's it's always a outward looking and upward looking position for our hearts, uh, both as we regard ourselves and as we regard, we regard other people. Um, and so as we continue through this study, as we, we consider uh, Paul's words here, um, just remembering that the the familial concern, the brotherly, the sisterly love that we have uh, for those in God's family is a, a powerful thing and um, can be an impassioned and should be an impassioned thing. Um, but with the goal of uh, becoming more like Christ, right? And being able to say like Paul, hey, young new believer, be more like me, not because I'm great, not because I'm perfect, but I've learned what it means to follow the Lord. I've, I've been through struggles that you are facing right now or that you will face, and uh, not that I've done it perfectly, but that we're able to say uh, with maturity, this is how we handle this situation. That's a, a great goal and a great reminder of... Um, just the calling that we have on our lives. Um, that was not just sit back. It's not just lazy freedom in Christ, but it's a, it's a continual renewal of our minds. It's a continual process and um, sometimes a difficult one, always an exciting one. Uh, and one that we're not doing just in our own power, right? Uh, we work out our salvation as God works inside of us. And so listening to the Holy Spirit as we we face trials and temptations and celebrations and defeats. Um, that's, that's what it looks like to have Christ formed in us as we continue our pursuit of Jesus.